MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Hey everybody, this is Brandon Reed with My Fantasy Sports Talk, bringing you the Week 9 edition of Pick 6. This is where I bring you six players I think could be sneaky plays on the waiver wire this week, so you should run out there and grab them while you still have a chance. And number one on my list this week, my quarterback, I'm going to go ahead and mention him. The number one pick in the draft, Jameis Winston. He is currently owned in 31% of leagues, so not very much at all. That's actually up 14%. And I'm really finally giving him a look uh, because, you know, he hasn't played like the number one pick to this point, uh, but he also hasn't played terrible. He's been improving, and um, he uh, really beat a much improved Falcons team and Falcons defense last week, so they are showing improvement in Tampa Bay, and he hasn't thrown an interception in three games. This week, playing a very soft Giants D. We saw what New Orleans did to them last week uh, in that shootout, and uh, this game this week is in Tampa Bay against the Giants, and and I just feel like he's he's gonna give you a good game uh, this week in in you know more so in fa daily fantasy than even maybe in your leagues. I just feel like this could be one of those breakout games where he finally does put up big numbers and, and shows why he was the number one pick in the draft. So um, I, I would take a chance on him this week. Could be a really good value. I Like again, like I said, again, he's not going to disappoint you. He's been having decent games. So uh, for the value in daily fantasy, he could be a pretty good play this week for what you're going to get out of him point-wise. Next up on my list is the running back of the Chicago Bears, Jeremy Lankford. i got to put this guy in this week. Everybody is. Uh, no Matt Forte. Matt Forte is gone. Langford is owned in 79%. Check this out, folks. That's up 77% this week. And the reason is, of course, he is the number one guy now. No Matt Forte. And uh, Cutler should be able to throw enough and score enough points that Chicago doesn't have to totally abandon the running game. Uh, and uh, I think Langford will catch a couple of balls out of the backfield per game and probably break them for double-digit gains. And they're playing San Diego this week, who has not looked good against um, the run so far this year. So I think just you go with Lankford out of sheer volume. Uh, I think it goes both ways, both in your yearly fantasy leagues. You should pick him up if you still have a chance. And I think he also could be a really good play in daily fantasy this week. Uh, or, yeah, this week, I think he could have a pretty good value tag on him for what you're going to get. Again, he's probably going to shoulder a lot of the workload for the Bears uh, going forward um, until until Forte comes back, um, if that happens. So, uh, Jeremy Lankford at your running back position. Next up is my receiver. I'm going with Brandon LaFell of the New England Patriots. And if you remember, he was Tom Brady's yeah, number one guy behind Gronk last year. That wasn't that long ago, so this guy can play. Brady is comfortable with him. He is currently owned in 55% of leagues. That's up four. Um, and I think he's finally getting healthy and finally working his way into the rotation. And uh, he will play a bigger part in this offense going forward. Uh, mark my word on that. It going in, you know, as, as we go later into the season and the playoff uh, race as well. Uh LaFell will be a big part of that. So they're playing a, a fairly weak secondary this week in Washington. And, you know, and I'm not necessarily recommending him uh, for daily uh, this week or even next week. But what I would recommend is to grab him off the free agent wire in your yearly leagues and stash him and play him if you're desperate. But I think he is going to become a pretty good wideout stud, uh, number one wideout in, in the weeks to come for New England. So we'll wait and see about that. But uh, he, he, I think he should be pretty hot on the waiver wire list this week. Next up is my tight end who put on a show last week. Uh, of course, all the Saints did pretty much. Benjamin Watson, he is currently owned in 71% of ESPN leagues. That's up 20%, I think, uh, partly due to that huge show that he had last week. But um, uh, lightning in a bottle. Catch it if you can. Catch it while it's hot. And who really knew that he's been in the league 12 years? Now, this is not a rookie or a second or third year guy. Benjamin Watson has been around a while. Uh, I think he's actually drafted originally by um, New England, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, a long, long time ago, uh, draft pick in 2004. So 
Now, if you watch the last several Saints games, it's clear that Breeze needs a tight end. Um, you know, after losing Graham, Graham was so much a, a part of his offense in New Orleans. Uh, Breeze needs that tight end, and he feels comfortable with Watson. Monster game last week, and another very favorable matchup against Tennessee this week. So Watson could see a lot of snaps, as I don't think Tennessee is going to be out on the field for a, a long time, chewing up clock and running a lot of plays. I, I think you're going to have to see a fair amount of three and outs from Tennessee this week. So Watson and the Saints will be on the field for um, a good portion of the day. And next up, my flex play is Malcolm Floyd. This is basically due to another guy going down and Floyd's workload uh, will increase. Keenan Allen, done for the season. Floyd is currently owned in 68% of ESPN leagues. That's up 41% after the news that Keenan Allen is done. Now, Rivers, of course, will throw the ball a lot. Floyd is a big deep threat at 6'5", and he is about to become Rivers' favorite go-to guy. Now, San Diego is 2-6 and six and going to have to throw a lot to make any kind of run to salvage this season. And host, uh, they host the Bears this week, so uh, that always helps, you know, struggling defenses or, or teams basically needing a win uh, playing the Bears. So, uh, big target, 6'5", Malcolm Floyd. Rivers will throw it a lot to him, and I think they're about to hit desperation mode. I think they'll slightly abandon the running game. Uh, Melvin Gordon really hadn't turned out to be what they thought he would. Now, Danny Woodhead is playing good, but they're going to be looking to take a lot of shots downfield, and Malcolm Floyd would be the recipient of a lot of those Rivers targets. Guarantee that. Lastly on the list my uh, this week is my defense, Minnesota Vikings. Uh, uh, this is a, a risky play. I'm not recommending you go out there and get them for your yearly fantasy leagues and hanging on to them. It's not that kind of play this week. They're owned in 69%. That's no game. No movement on that at all this week. And while I'm not crazy about the Minnesota D as a whole, they have scored 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 15 points in games this year. So they're not Great, but they're solid. And I like the matchup against the Rams in Minnesota. Now, Gurley's looking impressive, but Foles is not necessarily looking impressive. And he will turn the ball over. So, now, I think this could be a really big play in your daily fantasy leagues. It happens every single week when one of these teams comes up and shocks you and scores a lot of points on defense that you weren't expecting. And that probably cost a lot of you uh, a lot of money in your daily leagues, as it does me. You get beat by a defense that you didn't see coming, get totally blindsided. Look out for this matchup this week, Minnesota hosting the St. Louis Rams. That could be the case. So, that does it for the Week 9 edition of Pick 6. Now, I know we're getting late into the season, so if you do need a kicker, just go get a kicker. This is Brandon Reed, MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Visit our website, visit our YouTube page, and like us on Facebook. MyFantasySportsTalk.com.